Hello, I'm Andrew Turner and today I'll be talking about Morello, the second cherry. Who am I? I've been a FreeBSD committer for around 10 years, mostly working on ARM64, with side projects of porting kernel sanitizers and kernel fuzzing. But for this talk, I'm a research associate at the University of Cambridge and the main developer on the Cherry BSD Morello project. An outline of this talk, I'll be giving a background into Cherry, I'll be introducing Morello, I'll be talking about what is Cherry BSD Morello, and some ongoing work. So what is Cherry? To answer that, first we need to look at what are capability systems. A capability system is a design pattern for how CPUs, languages, operating systems and more can control access to resources. Capabilities are communicable, unforgeable tokens of authority. In capability-based systems, resources are reachable only via capabilities. Capability systems limit the scope and spread of damage from accidental or intentional software misbehaviour. They do this by making it natural and efficient to implement in software two design principles. The principle of, of least privilege means that software should run with as few rights as possible and only the rights that is required to operate. And the principle of intentional use says that when software has multiple rights available, it is important that the rights are selected explicitly and not searched for or discovered. You want to do this as to make sure that you are using the rights in a way that you do not intend. So what is Cherry? Cherry is an architectural prediction model and composes a capability system model with hardware and software. It adds new protection perimeters to the instruction set architecture and is implemented by micro-architectural micro extensions to a CPU and it enables new security behaviour in software. It is added to the, C the instruction set for efficiency as, th as this means that we can reason about it and perform instructions atomically. Cherry mitigates vulnerabilities in the C and C++ trusted computer bases. These include hypervisors, operating systems, language runtimes and browsers. It provides fine-grained memory protection and scalable compartmentalization. And it directly impedes common exploit chain tools used by attackers, while also mitigates many vulnerability classes even potential unknown classes. We'll look at an example of architecture least privilege. We have a classic buffer overflow attack. We we'll allocate a buffer on the stack where the return address is above buffer. Malicious data that is written to the buffer may then be written over the return address. This return address then gets loaded into the return address register. A non-function return is loaded into the program counter at which point the CPU will execute from this malicious address. These privileges were not required by the C language, so why are we allowing code to write outside its target buffer, corrupt or inject a code pointer, or execute data as code, or reuse code in a way that was not intended? Limiting privilege doesn't fix bugs, but it does provide vulnerability mitigations. An important thing to note that memory management units do not enable efficient fine grained privilege reduction. So, what are the Cherry design goals and approach? We want to def conflate memory virtualization and protection. Memory management units protect the locate by location or address, whereas Cherry protects by reference point or pointers to code and data. We are reusing point of indirection to avoid adding new architectural table lookups. This is an architectural mechanism that enforces software policies. It allows for language-based properties, for example, referential, spatial, and temporal integrity, for example, in C and C++ compilers, linkers, operating system model, and runtime. It allows for new abstractions, for example, software compartmentalization and confinement of objects for in address space isolation. Pointers today are implemented as integer virtual addresses. Usually they point to allocations and mappings. They are derived from other pointers via integer arithmetic. 
They do reference by jumps, nodes and stores. There is no integrity protection and can be injected or corrupted. Arithmetic errors such as out of bounds node and overrides are possible. And inappropriate use, for example, executable data and format strings are easy. Attacks on data and code pointers are highly effective, often achieving arbitrary code execution. How does Cherry enforce protection semantics on pointers? With integrity and provenance validity, it ensures that valid pointers are derived only from other valid pointers via valid transformations, so invalid pointers cannot be used. For example, receiving network data cannot be interpreted as code or data pointers. Bounds prevent pointers from being manipulated to access the wrong object. Bounds can be minimized by software, for example, stack allocator or heap allocators. And monotonicity prevents pointer privilege escalation so that bounds cannot be increased. Permissions limit unintended use of pointers, for example, write not execute for pointers. These perimeters not only allow us to implement strong prediction models, but also higher level predictions such as scalable software compartmentalization. Cherry capabilities extend pointers with a tag such that dereferencing an untagged capability throws an exception and in memory overwrite of any of the capability clears the tag. And what's important is this tag is not stored with the capability but is, se is separate and non vi not visible to the programmer. Bounds limit the address space available to the pointer. Using floating point style compress compression we can reduce the size of 64 bits lower and upper bounds to be within the upper 64 bits of the pointer. This means that larger allocations have stronger alignment requirements and that out of band pointer support essential to the C compatibility is possible. We have permissions to limit the operations. For example, we, you could remove support for load or store via a pointer. And there is a separate ceiling mechanism, which can turn a pointer into a non-dereferenceable capability. Why is this important? Because around 70% of vulnerabilities addressed with security updates each year are, are based on memory safety issues. This has been found both by Microsoft and more recently by Chrome. What is Morello? Morello is a type of cherry. It is a prototype to add cherry capabilities to the 64-bit ARM architecture. The result of five years of collaboration between the University of Cambridge and ARM. It is based on the ARM v8.2 AR64 architecture. It will be used to experiment with software use of capabilities. There will be two implementations. There will be a simulator in late 2020, and there will be hardware implementation in 2021. With only, unfortunately, there won't be limited availability, as only several hundred boards are expected to be made. It is important to note as well that as a prototype architecture, ARM does not guarantee forward compatibility. This is only expected to be used to experiment with the use of capabilities in real world systems. The Morello board is a demonstrator of this capability architecture. It is a quad core high end CPU based on the NeoVS N1, the same CPU used in the Amazon AWS Graviton 2 instances. It is built on a 7 nanometer process and it will be targeting 2 GHz. It is compliant with the server based system architecture, which is the standard ARM server platform. And the BSDs, as long as they have an ARM64 port, should boot by default. This is the Morello board. In the upper right, you'll see a quad core ARM CPU with modified to understand the capability architecture and to be able to pass capabilities across the, ca the Kerhern bus in the middle. These capabilities will then be able to be stored in RAM. What is the Cherry BSD Morello project? First of all, what is Cherry BSD? It's an adaption of FreeBSD to use Cherry capabilities. It was eventually developed on the Cherry MIPS platform with recent experimental support for RISC-V. 
It includes Chewy ABI. This is a pure capability ABI where all pointers are Chewy capabilities, either both explicit, for example, void star, P, and implicit, for example, the return address. It is implemented in the kernel with an ELF image activator. This is similar to how FreeBSD does Compact32. For example, i386 user space on an AMD64 kernel. And user space libraries are built both as Chewy ABI and as the legacy, that is, without Chewy capabilities. While as binaries are, are built entirely as Chewy ABI where possible. For more information on Chewy ABI, Brooks Davis gave a talk at BSD CAN last year. Chewy ABI provides C and C++ memory safety. That is, all allocations are bound by default. So, malloc of memory size will return a pointer that can only dereference size bytes. However, due to the floating point style compression of bounds, malloc may need to round up size to ensure it is representable. Pointers to subobject members will be bounded. For example, a pointer to an int within a strat will have a size of 4. And the function return address is a capability. This means it must be tagged and have an executable permission. This means even if there was a buffer overflow, it would be very difficult for an attacker to then overwrite the return address with another code capability. What is Cherry BSD Morello? It is a port of Cherry BSD to Morello. It's still a work in progress, and will be, we expect it will be released when the software simulator is ready. It will have full Cherry ABI world. It will be built with a LLVM toolchain based on the existing Cherry LLVM toolchain. And demo, demo third party applications will be ported. For example, we, have work, we are working on WebKit and PostgreSQL. We hope to be able to build some ports and packages for Morello. However, this may require a distributed Podria to build efficiently before hardware is ready. And expect to have. Beehive working on Morello. However, this does require us to finish the ARM64 port of Beehive first. What does it take to port an operating system to Morello? First of all, you need to port to a 64 This was simplified in FreeBSD as I had previously worked on this as part of a funding by the FreeBSD Foundation. You then need to make sure your AI64 port works as buildable with LLVM as this was the toolchain that we use. You need to support building with next to LLVM, as LLVM can be updated frequently. And you finally, you will need to update your exception handlers to store and restore the capability registers on exception entry and exit. This is a rather heavy run change. At this point, your operating system could run a, a hybrid user space. That is, legacy binaries with some use of capabilities. The second part of voiding an operating system to Morello would be porting a Cherry ABI-like layer. It was originally implemented as a compatibility layer, however it is now the default ABI with a Compact64 layer added for legacy binaries. The, the kernel is a hybrid binary, it has pointers to user space annot annotated B capabilities, and some kernel data structures store capabilities. User access is via capabilities, and importantly, the privilege access never is still used. However, the exact details may change before Cherry BSD Morello is initially released. What are some issues that people have, we've found working with Morello? Often people assume size of void is equivalent to size of a log, and this is not the case. We've had to modify code that assumes this to use uint pointer t or int pointer t as these can both hold pointers. Allocators also need to be taught to be able to set bounds on capabilities. These include suballocators. And in this case, malloc is a sub maybe a suballocator to emmap. Pointer arithmetic only works within an allocation. After realloc, you'll need to redrive any pointers that point to data within it and not just add the difference between the old allocation and the current allocation. And pointers need to be naturally aligned. 
His aunt Mem Copy appoint her to a misaligned character way and back, as, the, as this will mean the tag is lost. And you have to be very careful with point to arithmetic. Capabilities need, need to be a provenance, so don't try to trick the compiler. However, they may go slightly out of bounds as long as they're not the referenced at this point and return written bounds before using them in the future. So what are some of the ongoing work? We have temporal memory safety work. This, is, this will stop use after reallocation attacks. This works by the kernel efficiently sweeping memory to find capabilities to already freed memory. It initially does this in the background and then at some point in the future it will pause the process to do a final sweep to ensure before reallocation can happen. This use after reallocation is slightly weaker than use after free as it allows for some, some use after a free but before the full background sweep. And more, more information on this can be found in the cornucopia paper. We've been working on formally modelling the Cherry instruction sets. With the RISC V and MIPS instruction set architecture extensions specified in a formal architectural model. This model can be compiled into an executable model to test new ideas and it can be used to prove security properties about the instruction set. ARM defines its instructions in a pseudocode. This can be transformed in a formal language. It can then be used to prove the same security properties as on Rallo as on Cherry MIPS and Cherry Risk V. And finally, we have an ongoing project to use the Cherry ABI work in the kernel. This will mean that all pointers within the kernel are Cherry capabilities. We have been testing with fuzzing with syscolor. Unfortunately, at the moment, it is MIPS only. However, we expect it to be ported to Moralo. For further reading, we have, we have a website with some details on Moralo. We have a 40 page introduction to Cherry, as well as a 500 page architecture manual. All right, Andrew, go ahead. It's your QA. Okay, so I've uh, got three questions so far. First is, uh, what do you think about single address based systems and separating memory mapping from protection? Um, so Cherry is, doesn't require you to, uh, doesn't actually provide, well, at least you still have protection in, with, along with memory mapping if you wish. There is no requirement for even there to be an MMU in the system. Um, and so it is entirely up to the uh, software designer or the operating system designer as to whether or not you want to include memory mapping in your prediction. For Cherry BSD, we do for uh, the same reason that we do in FreeBSD, in that it is what you expect of a modern Unix operating system. System to, to include. However, uh, there's no, you, you may wish if you've got an embedded device where you don't even enable the MMU, to, but you can still use Cherry. Uh, so I have no opinion on it, but it's, it's a general idea, but it's a, something that we've thought about and have actually looked into and we allow for it. Um, and so for the single address space side, we have got two research projects. We have a PhD student who is working on a single address space microkernel. And uh, they, I think they've managed to, they had quite a lot of success. At one stage, they were running Nginx on top of their microkernel uh, with the only thing that you get on, cat, on the internet with cat videos or cat pictures. Uh, and we've got a second research project around um, create, uh, we have, we, one way of creating sandboxes is, uh, is to have a run it as a separate process. And so we have a, an idea of uh, being able to do function calls between processes. 
And so in that way, it's a, that, that makes it required to be single address based. So we, we sort of have there have a single address based Unix. Um, that one still will work in quite a lot of work in progress. And there's a lot of questions around if you jump, if you branch into another process and raise, suddenly a signal is raised, where should the signal go? Uh, and, and various things like that. It's often, yeah, the Unix does, the kernel doesn't actually care until the point at which you enter the kernel, and then it has to care. And so there's a lot of, lot of work still on that, around there. Um, second question I've got is, uh, was there a comparison done to see if it's more efficient to instead use uncompressed sizes and allow arbitrary mallocs, given how common and frequent malloc is. Um, originally, we had 128-bit capabilities, which means uh, your cache gets um, blown very quickly. So people remember the the how bad it was going from. 32-bit to 64-bit, and how caches really should have probably been doubled in size. Um, going from 64-bit to 256-bit pointers is not going to work in the, any, any commercially um, deployable um, hardware. And really, you need more than you need more than 128 bits if you want to decompress pointers. Or decompress bounds because you need you you'll need a base address which is sixty four bits decompressed, and you'll need a um, a length which will be sixty four bits decompressed. Uh, you may get that those down to fifty five bit fifty six bits something like that, um, but those adding those numbers together still makes it to, uh, greater than. 128 bits, and you need to be able to store them somewhere uh, if you ever have to write it out. Uh, I, yeah, I've been reminded that we, I said we originally had 256 bit capabilities, which I, mean, I may have said 128. Um, in reality, the, the, the sizes that malloc, you often malloc isn't, are often. The, the, the compression isn't a problem. You only, you lose bytes for most common sizes. You don't normally allocate malloc one, you know, a terabyte and one byte normally. Uh, you would normally allocate a, not a reasonably round number. Um, I have seen, we have seen some places where they, in QT, where they do, um, I try to allocate odd numbers but that's is the amount of overhead we look uh, the memory we lose is insignificant really. Uh, and the other question of, I have is, uh, um, do you have any memory performance results to share, and how does it compare to normal BSD in a similar prototype, uh, simulator slash prototype board? Uh, I we don't have performance numbers on Morello to share, and that uh, simulators aren't very good with for, for, for finding performance numbers. Um, we have some performance numbers on, for various things on um, with on our maps. I'm not sure what they are off the top of my head. Um, so we, we do have numbers. I don't, sorry, I don't know what they are. Uh, uh, I think some of the issue though was, I do remember that some of the numbers we, we do have issues with MIPS because it's often, we, well, the way it's implemented is with the capability registers are separate from the general purpose registers. So we've got to be careful where certain operations suddenly speed up because, of, because they've now got more, less register pressure um, so we, we uh, with RISC-V, we've made, made it a not that an option 
and we either double the size of the registers or we um, and create cap the capability and general purpose registers are the same. Uh, or uh, we, as an option, we can make it a second, a separate register file as to find out how much these two things affect each other. Um, and I think that was all the questions. Unless there's someone comes up with something on IRC. Uh, and I suppose this question is, is the Q&A video completely broken for others? If you, if you can hear me say that, then no. If there are people that wish, me, wish for me to repeat an answer because of, uh, the audio glitched out, I can do that. Okay, then if there's no more uh, questions, I, I guess we'll consider call this the end of the Q&A. Uh, That about it for the questions, Andrew. I have not seen any more. Just ask an answer. All right. No, I guess that was it. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Sorry about the delay in getting us started, though. No problem. <laughs>